Oh, hey. I didn't see you there. Today I'm going to tell you a story. Well, it's actually a couple stories about how we are bad at electrical engineering. I'm not an electrical engineer. Are you? I'm not. I'm not an electrical engineer. He wasn't either. No. Let's begin. So we got our whole circuit wired up on our breadboard, um, and it's not working. We're like, what do we do? Turns out we have the wrong resistors. So we eventually got that to work one time, once. We called it a day. Next day we come back, just solder it up on the PCB. We're like, all right, we're ready to go. Everything's working. Comes to the hold down day. We're like, sweet, let's go. This is gonna be an awesome test. Test it once, works flawlessly. Let's go. Um, and then we proceed to test it again, nothing. We check continuity. Turns out our current limiting one ohm resistor uh, was burnt out. So, wow, do you think these one ohm current limiting resistors look good? Yeah, I think they will be perfectly adequate for our use. Awesome, let's buy them. All right, buy a hundred of them. So after we got all the other issues sorted out, we were ready to do a hold down test. The main point of doing these hold down tests with Insight was to validate that our new uh, control system was gonna work. We went away from a PID controller and to a new state space controller so that we can do multiple inputs and get multiple outputs. Um, and that will allow us to later do translational control. We decided to go with an LQR controller, which stands for Legit Quality Regulator. It's a great one. It actually stands for Linear Quadratic Regulator, but the two are synonymous. Um, and we, we kind of naively thought it would be the perfect solution to our problem. So in order to simplify the control system, we decided to split the six degree of freedom uh, controller up into three one axis controllers, uh, which each take in the linearized dynamics of the system. What this allows us to do is control for each individually, and assuming the rocket stays upright and doesn't roll, we can, we can make this assumption. So from here, we decided to code in all of these dynamics into MATLAB, throw that into Simulink, and ran some pretty good simulations to describe what the system would do throughout the flight. Uh, from here, we knew we were ready to do a hold down test. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome my friend Jonah to the studio. Hey guys. So some things that we think went well with our hold down is um, we made a couple of big redesigns compared to some of the uh, uh, shadier decisions we've made in the past. Um, we've definitely learned a lot from those and we wanted to incorporate everything we learned into this new project. We redesigned our hold down mount. It's actually got um, four bearings inside of it from a long board. And so we really wanted to make sure there was no friction that could be interfering with any of these results to make sure that we are 100% as stable as possible because in real life, when you're rotating about your center of mass, there's no friction when you do that. It just kind of happens. Um, I can't believe of all days people decide to put a massive speaker outside our house. Today is the day. So the other thing we also think went really well is our new design, which is a lack of an airframe. So one of the things we found really frustrating with our previous rockets was trying to reach your fingers like down in there and like plug a wire in or something, or like trying to turn on the flight computer through a little like cardboard cutout in the side. Like we just didn't think it was, um, it, we don't think it looked very good and it sort of slowed everything down. Um, so we got rid of the airframe completely because we don't really need it for this airspeeds that we plan to travel at. So we just decided to get rid of it. So one of the things that we implemented was an actual state machine. Um, shout out to my friend Martin who helped me code that in um, and make sure it was super crisp. The state machine is linked up to the ground support system, so our little GUI running on our laptop, and that's all communicating to each other wirelessly. So we can very easily test components on the rocket. We can do a TVC test or an RCM test. So right now I'm gonna call it a roll control test. And we can do that wirelessly and confirm everything's working and then go into arming the vehicle. And we can only move into states when we say so and or when the flight computer deems it necessary during flight. Um, and this means that everything is super safe and super smooth. And we feel like that really streamlined the process because it doesn't need us to like 
go over to the flight computer, turn on the flight computer, make sure everything's fine, it's not moving too much while it waits for liftoff. The ignition is done on the flight computer by itself, so the rocket handles all the ignition. Once we hit arm, the rocket runs through an auto sequence and everything is taken care of from there. And it means that we don't need to be interacting with it as much. And that is always good because we're stupid. So I think it's time we take a step back and talk about what an LQR controller actually does. So it solves what is called CARE, the continuous algebraic Riccati equation. This results in a K matrix, which holds the gains for the LQR controller. The first of which controls theta and the second of which controls theta dot in our one dimensional system. If, if there's any gyro noise or anything like that in the system where, where theta dot is having random values jumping up and down, uh, the theta dot gain will register these and send huge control outputs to the motor. Um, and, this, and this is what resulted in those oscillations. When choosing LQR, there was two assumptions that we overlooked. The first is that all of the states of the system are observable, and the second is that there is no noise. Unfortunately, we both have sensor noise and noise from the motor firing. So we needed some sort of noise reduction. Ah! Because we didn't have a great way to characterize the noise of the motor firing, what we decided to do was just strap inside to the test stand um, and just run a static pull down test to characterize the noise. Uh, yeah, that's all we did. After doing the noise characterization test, we then had some good quantifiable data that we could use to put into our simulation and actually see how this noise impacts the system, at least in our simulation. And what we found was that the system became very unstable. We had bad oscillations, exactly like we experienced during the hold down. And again, that's because, as Luke mentioned, the LQR works on these two key assumptions, and the really important one out of those two, if you hadn't connected these dots, was, well, you need to have no noise. So we were kind of stuck in this weird catch-22, where we couldn't get the gains to be low enough, where they wouldn't be impacted by noise, and they wouldn't be high enough to actually respond in any reasonable time. And so we reached out to Professor Joseph Barnard of BPS University, and he very kindly lent his, some of his time to help um, sort of message back and forth and figure out what was going on and gave us some advice about the system. Um, and I think one of the key takeaways that we get from that, or got from that conversation was like, there's no one system or one sort of optimization that you can use to get the system to work perfectly. Like there's always tweaking that you have to do and that's where like actually applying good engineering thought becomes really important. You have to see if the data actually looks good. That led us to LQG. It's like LQR, but instead of the R, it's a G. And that G stands for Gaussian. And Gaussian was this really smart dude who was like, oh hey, this noise stuff exists. Why don't we kind of avoid it? And we're like, yeah, we want to avoid this noise. It was a big issue. And Gaussian was like, yeah, you can avoid this noise. This really cool idea that, hey, you can use probability to figure out where your system should be, even if there's a bunch of noise. It's the exact same linearized system that we use for our LQR controller, but it just goes into a common filter, slightly different optimization. It's actually just the transpose of the optimization used in the LQR. Um, it's kind of weird how math works out in funny little ways. I don't understand it, but it does. This allows us to have the high gains that we need to get response times that are sort of within half a second. We know they're gonna be optimal, and then from there, we're pretty much sorted. So we're working towards implementing that, and we'll be testing that very soon. Huge shout out to everyone on our Discord. We're gonna be live streaming our next hold down on there. Also, make sure you subscribe, like this video. Thanks for listening to our story.